Welcome to Choice Classic Radio, where we bring to you the greatest old-time radio shows. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and thank you for donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For the direction of Irving Reed. Friends by Oscar Wilde. High above the city, on a tall column, stood the statue of the happy prince. He was gilded all over with leaves of fine gold. For eyes, he had two bright sapphires, and a bright red ruby glowed in his sword hilt. In the winter, the happy prince was alone, but in the summer, he was much admired by everyone who came to the public square. How high do you think the statue is, my child? I do not know, Master. Ever so high. Ever so high. That is not very precise. If I gave you his circumference, could you compute the distance from the tip of his nose to the hilt of his sword? I do not think I could, Master. But he looks just like an angel. A golden angel. How do you know? Have you ever seen one? Yes, Master. In my dreams. In my dreams. You will grow up to be very dull. There is no exactitude in dreams. And I do not approve of children's dreaming. I do not approve at all. Who is he, Father? The happy prince, my boy. The happy prince? Who was the happy prince? Did you not read about him in your storybook? He lived in the palace of San Sophie. Where sorrow was not allowed to enter. That must have been a strange and wonderful palace. It was more magnificent than any in the world. And what did the happy prince do there all day long? All day long, my boy, he played with his companions in the garden. And in the evening, he led the dance in the great hall. And did he stay in the palace always? Always. You see, round the garden ran a very lofty wall. And the prince never cared to ask what lay beyond it. Why not? Because everything around him in the palace was so beautiful, and he was so happy. And what happened to him? Why, nothing happened to him, my son. Nothing. Except that he tasted all pleasures and never wept. Did he never wept at all, Father? He never shed so much as a single tear. And that is why the courtiers called him the Happy Prince. For indeed, happy he was. Father, <laughs> Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. He is beautiful as a weathercock. But not quite so useful. That is true, Mr. Mayor. He is not quite uh, as useful as a weathercock. I am a practical man also. He will reign over the marketplace for many generations. And visitors from far off lands will say, What a happy town that can boast a statue like the Happy Prince. Yes. And they will also say, what a sensible town council, and what a wise mayor. Oh, thank you, thank you. They might say those very words. Little Swallow, Little Swallow, Little Swallow, light on my shoulder for a moment. I am the Happy Prince, and I want to talk to you. Little Swallow, I have often watched you fly down to the river and swoop low amongst the reeds. You love one of them, and that is why you linger in this cold town amid the winter snow. Instead of joining your brothers in Egypt. But your reed was fickle, wasn't she? She would not go away with you. And so tomorrow you start for the land of summer. But first, will you do me a small favor? A small service? They have set me high above the town, little swallow. And I, the happy prince, who never wept in life, in death, Weep for the ugliness and misery that he sees all about him. My heart is made of lead, and yet I cannot help but weep, because I see far away in a poor little house 
in a mean street, a mother who stitches by candlelight, and on a straw pallet by her side, her little son is wasting away with fever. Pluck the ruby from the hilt of my sword that you swallow, and take it to her as fast as you can. And then come back and tell me about it. flowers, my child. Passion flowers on a satin gown for the loveliest maid of honor. Think of it, my darling. She waits on the queen at the state ball tomorrow. I should like to see the queen. Will I ever be well enough to see the queen? She rides by in her coach. With God's help, you will be well soon enough, my son. Then why are you crying, mother? Look at the gown, darling. It's so lovely. See, I'll hold it up to the light. Yes, I like yellow. It, it almost seems as if the sun is shining through the window, doesn't it? Yes, darling. I'm so hot now. So thirsty. I should like some water, Mother. Just a little. May I have some water, Mother? Yes, of course, my boy. I'll give it to you. You are getting the river water again. And it is so bitter. Oh, it is the only water we have, child. Try to drink a little of it, please. I'll try. But it tastes so horrible. I should like an orange. A big, golden orange. How wonderful that would be. Can you get me an orange, Mother? Oh, my darling. I should like to bring you heaps and heaps of golden oranges. But until I finish this dress for the Queen's lady, I shall not have money enough to buy even one of golden bars. Try to sleep, my darling, and I'll stitch as fast as I can. Yes, Mother, but I'm so thirsty and so hot. Oh, dear God, let my fingers work faster so that I can get money enough to save my little son's life. Oh, I'm so weird. So weird. Mother? Mother, wake up. Oh. Oh, what's the matter? Heavens, I fell asleep. And the gown not half finished. Oh, what will the queen lady say? I slept a little, mother, and now I'm quite cool. Let me feel your forehead, darling. Why, yes, your fever's going down. Oh, thank you, dear God. My son will get well soon. I'm not very ill now, am I? Sleep again, child. And while you do, my fingers will work like lightning. The dress will not take long now. Why? What is this on the table? What have you found, Mother? This must be a ruby. I have seen them in the shop window. A ruby? A real ruby? Where did it come from? Why, I haven't any idea. Perhaps someone at the palace heard of my trouble and sent this ruby to help me. Yes, that must be it. There are some good people in the world, my son. Good people. And they put it on the table while I slept and didn't even wait for me to wake and thank them. Will I be able to have an orange then, Mother? Yes, my darling. I shall buy you as many oranges as you can eat and a lot of other good things besides. And soon you'll be out of bed and playing in the sunshine again. done a good action. And that is why you feel less cold. 
But I suppose that you are now thinking of Memnon in Egypt on his granite throne and the crocodiles lying warm in the sun and the sphinx as old as the world itself. And you want to join your brothers who are building a nest in the temple of Baalbek and hear the pink and white doves cooing to each other from the east. But first, look with me across the town to a garret where a young man sits writing. His hair is brown and crisp. His lips are red as pomegranate, and he has large and dreamy eyes. No little swallow. I have no ruby for him. But my eyes are made of rare sapphires. Pluck out one of them and take it to him. Well, do I not have my other eye? Pluck out the stone and take it to this young man. And hear something of his story. No, no, how stale it all is. Why was I ever cursed to write plays? I should be better off delivering loaves to the baker. Loaves. Loaves of bread. Fragrant and spongy. Oh, how hungry I am. And when shall I be able to buy another meal? Or build a fire in the grate? Or wear a fine coat? Or even mend the holes in the roof to keep this biting wind out? Yes. Yeah. Only the birds make their home with me. How sick of it all I am. And vain, perhaps, to think I can write. Uh, I'll give it up, I think. Yes, little bird. I shall stop this fool's task and work with my hands, and then I shall be warm. Why, this is remarkable. A swallow. Yes, a swallow. And what are you doing in this cold town, little swallow? If I were you, I should be in Egypt, where the sun is warm on the great palm trees, and where the yellow lions come down to the edge of the river Nile to drink. They'd have eyes like green bells. Green bells. Why... What is this? A piece of glass that the swallow has brought in his beak? No. It's a sapphire. A beautiful, glowing sapphire. What providence sent that bird in here? I shall buy food. I, I shall throw away these rags. I shall be warm. And my play. Oh, you wonderful swallow. I shall finish it. I shall finish my play. For here it is bitter cold and sure death for you. Whilst there you will sing above the mountains of the moon to the king who is black as ebony. And you will talk to the green snakes that coil in the palm trees. And watch the leaves that war with the butterflies. But before you bid the happy prince farewell, fly down to my feet that will swallow. And listen for a while to the match girl. Poor little swallow. I wonder if you're as cold as I am. I don't think you are. You'd fly away to a warm land. I should like to be warm. I should like to take all these matches and build a fire. A big blazing fire. My father would beat me if I went home with even a single box unsold. You are flying away. Goodbye, Swallow. Perhaps you are going to a land where the sun shines after all. Little Swallow, little Swallow, pluck out my other eye and give it to the match girl down there. She has neither shoes nor stockings. And her little head is bare. You must do as I bid you, little swallow. It does not matter if you make me blind. I have seen enough of joy. With that poor little girl down there. Pluck the sapphire and drop it before her. She will take it home 
And her father will not beat her. You must do as I say, little swallow. Or I shall be very unhappy. No, you will not hurt me. Take the stone down to the little magic girl. Again, little swallow. I wish I could take you home with me, but I think you'd be colder than you are now. What are you carrying in your beak? Why, it's a piece of glass. Blue, blue like the sky in summer. I think you want me to have it, don't you, little swallow? Oh, it is so pretty. Perhaps if I take it home to my father, he'll forget to whip me. Oh, what a lovely blue stone. Thank you, little swallow. Thank you. <laughs> She was laughing, little swallow, wasn't she? That sound paid me a thousand times for the loss of my eyes. You have been a splendid messenger, dear little swallow. And now you must start on your journey to Egypt. You must not stay in this cruel cold any longer. No, little swallow. It is kind of you to say that you will never leave me. But I do not need you any longer. And so fly away to your brothers in Egypt. For I have heard you sigh for the scent of the lotus flower. And I know that you miss your sleep in the tomb of the great kings. So go with my blessing for all the help you have given me. Do you really mean what you say, little swallow? Or are you speaking out of kindness to me? Yes, you could be my eyes by day. And at night you could sleep at my feet. Well then, little swallow... Fly over the city. Fly swiftly. But miss nothing. Tell me of the misery and want you find there. I have a plan to lessen some of it. Go, little swallow. Return soon and tell me what you have seen. It is cold under the bridge here. There are no doors to shut out the wind. Even if we shut out the wind, we could not shut out our hunger. I wandered near the meat shops today. Uh, there were succulent sides of beef. Uh, there was mutton and sweetbreads and kidneys. And then I went past the baker's house. His oven smells sweet. I asked for a loaf. He gave me a kick. Why, why do you talk of all this? It will not make us less hungry. No, nor more so. Ah, that is true. Hunger and cold and the lack of bed are one to us. We are beggars. The poor can spare nothing, and the rich are stingy. I wandered near the fruit merchants. There were bunches of glistening grapes. There were melons and bananas from hot countries. There were figs and dates. You promised to pay me on the first of the month. It is now the second. And still you don't have the money. I shall have it for you next week. I think truly. My husband will be very busy at his bench. He is a good workman. And we shall be able to pay you with all the interest. Uh, next week is not this week. Your husband will not hesitate to give me the money if I go to his shop. Oh, no, you must not do that. Do not do that, I pray you. He must never know that I borrowed money from you. Or oh, why? Or oh, why, pretty lady? You know that it was for my brother who was in trouble. Yes, of course, sweet lady. For a brother who was in trouble. <laughs> not a very heavy ring, but I shall give you two shillings for it. Only two shillings? It is a good price, I think. I must buy food, and that ring is my wedding ring. When it is gone, there'll be nothing left to sell. Perhaps you could let me have three shillings on it. Three shillings, yes. I shall give you two shillings, as I said. It's a good price. <laughs> It is good to have a fire tonight. There are many without a fire tonight. And we have some bread in the larder. I bought it from the baker boy. 
He fell from his basket and was only a little bit dirty. You must look very closely to see the door on it. Give me food, and I shall eat forever. You wear that coat for just one day. Sir, it was all fire. I cannot afford drugs. Don't you to ease the pain? We could not find any wood for a fire, Mother. The bills must be paid somehow. We could move to a small room. She was beautiful, and now she's hiding. We have always gone ragged, it seems. He spends all his time in the tavern now. The fevers will get us sooner or later. Her husband's dead, and she is helpless. Coal is not for the poor. I have meat, John. How shall we live through the winter? What is our life to us? My children in the same faces are like knives in my heart. Cut you close together. We may be warm. We are hungry. We are cold. We are in pain. We are ill. We are dying. Hope has left us. A manly pride. An honor. We are home. We are starving. Why do we live? We are hungry. We are hungry. We are in pain. We are weary. Hungry. We are weary. Yes, little swallow. You have missed nothing. There is great suffering, and we can do so little but listen. I am covered all over with fine gold. Every night you will strip a leaf of this gold from me and take it to some needy soul. And thus, as I slowly lose my own luster, it shall shine in the eyes of the downtrodden. not even one speck of my former brightness left. I was once so proud, a happy prince. And now I must be a pitiable sight. I heard the mayor talking about me this morning, and I know that he will soon have me pulled down. I am not sorry. But you, faithful little swallow, who will never again see the sun blood red on the pyramid, or hear the river horse and the reed by the sleepy river, you I love. And I am sad to see you going to the house of death. And yet, death is only the brother of sleep, is he not? And I am tired. So wait a moment, and I shall come with you. Dear, dear little swallow, we shall be together. You are dead, little swallow. And my heart is cold and breaking. I have called you together, gentlemen, to discuss a matter that concerns the pride of the town. Uh, what uh, matter is this, Mr. Mayor? I refer to the statue of the Happy Prince. As I was walking through the marketplace this morning, I happened to look up at him. And I noticed that he was very shabby, gentlemen. Very shabby. Oh, Have uh, any of you noticed him? It is yes. true, Mr. Mayor, true. The happy prince is no longer the pride and ornament of the marketplace. The ruby has fallen from his sword. His eyes are gone. And he is golden no longer. In fact, he is little better than a beggar. Uh, you are very observant. And then, too, I noticed a dead bird at his feet. A dirty, bedraggled swallow. Yes, I too saw the bird. Well, then, since the statue is no longer beautiful, he is no longer useful. Do you all agree with me? Absolutely. Yes, of course. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. We all agree. Yes, yes. 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 Undeniable. Most yes. certainly. Yes. And so I propose that we pass a resolution to melt down the happy prince. Agreed, agreed. A resolution. Not in time. I support it. I'm all no good now. And when he is removed from his pedestal, I propose that we erect a substitute. Yes, yes, yes. A substitute. Yes. Yes. A substitute not unworthy, I trust. Of the place the happy prince once held in our hearts. Good idea. A happy plan. By all means, very thing. How right he is. And not unworthy substitute. And uh, this substitute, Mr. Mayor, shall be... Well, uh, my friends and advisors, 
What could be more fitting than a statue of uh, myself? Himself? Oh, a statue you... of himself? Why, that is monstrous. The statue should be of me. No, I should have the statue. I have been longest in council here. Some people would wish me on a pedestal and no one else. If we must have a statue, I am best fitted to be the subject. I have a broad brow. I support myself with dignity. I should look well in bronze. I should be a man of action like myself, perhaps on a horse. They will erect my statue sooner or later. Now is a fine opportunity. I have given most of the treasury. They could repay me with dishonor. Oh, let it be a young man like myself with a bit of quiet. As the mayor, the honor should be mine alone. But I have a new coat. The statue would look well in a new coat. I have been told that I greatly resemble the happy prince. <laughs> How they boast of their miserable shortcomings. Let the statue be a fitting one. Me, for example. No. Me. 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 What is the matter with you? <laughs> you peer into the furnace as though you see demons inside. Well, come here. Have a look for yourself. Do you see anything? Any metal? Uh, yes. Piece of lead, that's all. At least it looks like lead. Because if it were, it would have melted long ago. It is lead. Watch. I lift it out of the furnace. Here it is. On the tongue. Do you notice that it hasn't even changed color? Why, it is shaped like a heart. It is a heart. The heart of the happy prince. You mean the statue that was pulled down in the marketplace? That's the one. They brought it in this morning. Shabby and cracked open as though it had burst. The jewels from the eyes and the sword were gone. Plucked out by crows, probably. And the gold coat was rotted off by the wind and the rain. I melted him down, except for the heart, which will not melt at all. Yes, there must be a great deal of stone in it. But throw it onto the rubbish pile over there. Oh, wait! Is that a bird, a swallow? Yes, but it is dead. When they brought in the statue, the swallow was lying dead at his feet. Well, I should have thought it's still too cold for the swallows to come home. I, too. But perhaps it's a sign of an early spring. Well, throw the heart beside the swallow. Let us go on with our work. Very well. It's done. Yeah. The heart and the swallow. They put me in mind of something. Put you in mind of what? Let me think a moment. Well, uh, yes, I remember. It was at the play the other evening. The overseer gave me a ticket. It was by a young playwright, and I couldn't understand it. For the line seemed silly. Silly? Why silly? Well, the last scene was in heaven. God looked over our town and said to one of his angels, Bring me back the two most precious things you can find in the town. And what did the angel bring? He brought a leaden heart and a dead bird. And God said, You have rightly chosen, for in my garden of paradise, this little bird shall sing forevermore, and the happy prince shall praise me. same time for another presentation of the Columbia Workshop. The Columbia Workshop has presented as a special holiday program Oscar Wilde's The Happy Prince. Leopold Prosser adapted the story for radio. The Columbia Workshop is under the direction of Irving Reese.